नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन नाइन इन अवर कोर्स ऑन वर्क सिस्टम डिज़ाइन वी आर करंटली इन द सेकेंड वीक ऑफ अवर डिस्कशन एंड द टॉपिक ऑफ द डिस्कशन इज़ प्रोडक्टिविटी इन द वीक वन एंड वीक टू वी आर डिस्कसिंग वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ प्रोडक्टिविटी हाउ प्रोडक्टिविटी इज़ डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द कॉमनली यूज टर्म्स सच एज एफिशेंसी एंड परफॉर्मेंस we have tried to understand what are the factors that influence the productivity of an organization also we have seen the causes for low productivity in the last session if you remember we have seen the target areas or how to improve the productivity of an organization and we have seen the various facets various factors that must be taken into account if we want to improve the productivity of an organization some of the examples are that we must focus on technology we must focus on the employees we must focus on the management procedures we must focus on materials so we have seen that what are the various important salient points which must be taken into account if we want to improve the productivity now it is easier said than done when we have to increase the productivity first we have to calculate what is our current productivity then by changing certain inputs or by improving our output we have to again recalculate the productivity and then compare the two that we were producing this much output with maybe x amount of input now we have changed our input to y how it is affecting my productivity so first we have to calculate the current productivity and then we have to calculate the modified productivity by changing the input and then compare that to so in today's class our focus will be to see that how mathematically we can calculate productivity we will try to take different examples and understand that how mathematically we can calculate productivity and how we can do decision making based on the various changes in productivity that have taken place by changing the inputs or the outputs so today's session will more likely be on mathematics the mathematics is not very complex it is just basic 10th class mathematics in which we have to do add multiply subtract or divide so no difficult mathematical equations or knowledge is required in order to solve this simple problems only thing we need to understand is that what has to be taken as an output and what has to be taken as an input so let us see the first problem on your screen the following information regarding the output produced and inputs consumed for a particular company is given below so the most simple problem output is itself specified as in terms of money that is rupees 10000 so we know our numerator is rupees 10000 what are the inputs also are clearly specified human input is rupees 3000 capital input is again rupees 3000 material input is 2000 energy input is rupees 1000 and other miscellaneous inputs are rupees 500 so inputs are specified directly output is also specified now we have to compute the various productivity indices so we can see here the various productivity indices you can have labor productivity as we have seen the different productivity measures are there we can have partial productivity measures we can have total productivity measures we can have total factor productivity measures we can have multi factor productivity measures so today in the first problem we will try to see the partial productivity so partial productivity is when the output is divided by an individual input now individual input can be in terms of material it can be in terms of energy it can be in terms of human resource so depending upon the input we will have a partial productivity measure so labor productivity is output divided by the labor input which is already quantified in terms of rupees so our output is 10000 rupees and the input is 3000 rupees so it is the part uh, partial measure of productivity that is labor productivity is calculated as 3.33 similarly capital productivity rupees 10000 divided by the capital input that is also quantified rupees 3000 again the capital productivity is 
3.33 and similarly by dividing the output we can calculate the partial productivity measures in terms of material productivity in terms of energy productivity as well as in terms of other miscellaneous expenses so this is a measure of individual input going as a input and the output is the total output that has been produced so this is the first way of calculation then if we have to calculate the total productivity so we have to take into account the total output divided by the total input in the previous cases labor productivity material productivity energy productivity we were taking an individual input as the input and the total output as the output but here we are taking total output and the total input the total input will be made up of addition of the individual inputs so the material input plus labor input plus energy input all inputs will be added and then it will be taken as a total input then it will be taken in the denominator and in the numerator we will take the total output and this will give us the total productivity so we can see here 10000 is our total output it is divided by the summation of all the inputs which is coming out to be rupees 9500 so the total productivity comes out to be 1.053 so this is our first problem just try to differentiate between the partial productivity measure and the total productivity measure now let us try to take another problem here the input and outputs are not specifically outlined so it is not that it is not given in the problem that this is the output and this is the input as was the first case where the output and input was specifically given here we have a problem statement these are two problem statements and we will try to see that what is the output and what is the input and then try to calculate the productivity i am reading the first statement for you find the productivity if four workers installed 720 square yards of carpet in 8 hours now you can see it will give us a partial productivity because we are having the labor input so we can have the labor productivity here because the input is in terms of four workers who are working for 8 hours each then the 720 square yards of carpet they are laying or they are installing so the output we have to now see that what is the output of this activity so the activity is being done by a specific number of workers now they are doing the activity so the output is the output of the activity and the output is the installed 720 square yards of carpet so that is our output and the input is the work done by the workers similarly in second problem statement you can see compute the productivity of a machine which produced 68 usable pieces in two hours so here time is the input so two hours have been spent to produce 68 usable pieces so the output here is 68 pieces and the input is two hours so the time is the input number of pieces produced is the output so let us see now how we can calculate the productivity now in first case as i have told you that it is a it is a case of partial productivity labor hours we are taking as the input so the, the first thing is the output now the output is the yards of carpet installed and the input is the labor hours that are going into the process of carpeting or in the process of laying the carpet now 720 square yard has been installed that is the output and the input is four workers are working for eight hours per worker per day so we can see that 32 hours is the input 720 yards is the output so 22.5 yards per hour is the total productivity of these four workers working for 8 hours duration so we can calculate the number of yards that a person can lay per hour or what four persons can lay in 8 hours each one of them working for 8 hours so we can say this is per hour so if we can uh, say that if we have two persons working for 16 hours again we can see that the number of yards that we are laying must remain 
same. So, that is you can say one example of labor productivity. The second problem the output is 68 pieces are produced. So, that is the output and the input is that for 2 hours we are working. So, the machine is working for 2 hours. So, usable pieces plus the production uh, sorry divided by the production time that is the input. So, 68 usable pieces divided by 2 hours. So, we can very easily say 34 pieces per hour is a productivity for this operation. So, we first problem was that we are given the direct output and input that input of uh, sorry output of the process is this in terms of money and the various inputs are this. In this we have tried to understand that what we have to take as the output and what we have to take as the input. Although it is simple, but we are just trying to understand sometimes it may become slightly complicated also. So, in the problems where the input and output is not clearly specified, we have to see that what is the output here and what is the input. Now, let us see uh, problem number 3. A wrapping paper company produced 2000 rolls of paper in a day. So, we have seen 2000 rolls of paper per day. Standard price is dollar one per roll. Labor cost was dollar one sixty. Material cost was dollar fifty and overhead cost was dollar three twenty. Determine the multi-factor productivity. Now, you can see here nowhere it is mentioned what is the output, what is the input. Now, we have to see that what has to be taken as the output. Now, whatever is produced, what is the output, what is the product produced has to be taken as the output. So, in this case we see 2000 rolls of paper in a day is the output and what is the input? The input is $160 as labor cost, $150 sorry dollar 50 as the material cost and dollar 320 as the overhead cost so we have the inputs we have the outputs but if you see the inputs are in terms of that also we have to understand the inputs are in terms of currency the output is in terms of numbers so we can say that this much number per dollar that can also give us productivity, but what we can do we can also convert it into money that what is the total output because the standard price is also given. So, the standard price is dollar one per roll. So, we can convert our output in terms of the money that is being generated in the output or the revenue and the denominator can be what is the input that is going into the system for producing that revenue. So, 2000 pieces or 2000 rolls standard price per roll is dollar one. So, we can say that 2000 dollar revenue is being generated that is the output and then we can see what is the input going into the system and then the output divided by input will give us the total productivity. So, we have to calculate here the multi-factor productivity. So, in multi-factor productiv productivity we can see the multi-factor productivity is given by quantity produced at standard price divided by the inputs. Now, inputs here are labor cost plus material cost plus overhead cost. So, 2000 rolls is our output standard price is dollar one divided by the total input 160 dollars plus dollar 50 plus the overheads that is dollar 320. So, this comes out to be 3.77. So, here we have seen that we, we can always convert our output in terms of money if the price of the component is known and the number of components that are produced as output is known. So, that is we can say another way of representing the data and calculating the productivity. This is an example of multi-factor productivity. Now, let us take the another problem which is slightly maybe more involved. Let us take read the statement first. Long Beach Bank employs three loan officers. Now, this is a case study or a problem of a bank which is employing three loan officers each working eight hours per day. So, the number of workers is given or the loan officers is given and eight hour shift per day is also given. Each officer processes an average of five loans per day. The bank's payroll 
cost for the officers is dollar 820 per day and there is a daily overhead expenses of dollar 500 now we have to compute the labor productivity compute the multi factor productivity using loans per dollar cost as the measure so the measure also is given so we can easily from the second statement we can easily see that what has to be taken as the output and what has to be taken as the input so loans per dollar that that, that means that in the denominator the dollars will come so we have to add whatever is given in terms of dollars little bit of hint is given in the problem only and the first problem statement is compute the labor productivity so the labor productivity how it can be calculated what is the input of a labor the labor gives time for processing the loans so time is the input of the labor how many people are working three loan officers are working how much time they are spending eight hours per day they are spending how much loan applications they are processing i think five it is given in the statement five loans per day so each officer so which means three officers are there so five loans per day they are processing so 15 loan applications they are processing each day how much time is going into the system that also you can calculate 3 hours sorry 3 workers for 8 hours each so we can easily calculate the labor productivity now let us try to understand the calculation but prior to that we have to first see the other part of the statement also so let me first go Uh, regarding the calculation of our labor productivity now labor productivity is simply the ratio of the number of loans processed to the labor hours which i have already explained so the output is three officers each one processing five loan application divided by three officers putting eight hours per day so we can say that 0.625 loans per labor hour is the productivity for labor that is the productivity per person that whosoever is doing uh, the job of uh, sanctioning of loans so this is 0.625 loans per labor hour have to be issued must be issued that is uh, you can say the labor productivity currently certainly we can try to improve this value 0.625 by certain methods that we have seen in our previous presentation that how we can improve our productivity so this is the current productivity status now how the company wants to improve this productivity we have got the current productivity three loan officers five loans per day they are processing each officer is processing five loans per day so total loans processed per day are 15 divided by three officers for eight hours each total input is 24 hours going into the system so 0.625 loans per hour they are processing very simple now the bank is considering the purchase of a new computer software for the loan operation so now they want to upgrade the technology that can be helping them or that can help them to increase this productivity the software will enable each loan officer to process 8 loans per day so it will definitely lead to improvement in the labor productivity because now each person or each loan officer will be able to process 8 loans per day although the overhead expense will increase to dollar 550 so initially we had a value which we can see what was the value for overhead expense earlier it was dollar 500 after the use of this new software the value of overhead will increase to dollar 550 now we can calculate the new labor productivity what will change the numerator will change because now each officer is processing 8 loans per day so our numerator will become 18 and our denominator will also change because now we will see that the denominator sorry will remain same because the loan officers are three only and they are putting 8 hours each so if the denominator input remains same 
in case of i am talking only of the labor productivity if we talk of the multi factor or total productivity the denominator is also going to change why because now our overhead expenses are increasing from dollar 500 to 550 but in case of labor productivity the denominator is three workers working for 8 hours per day 8 hours per day so that remains the same now we can calculate the multi factor productivity also which will also change why because our output is changing our input is also changing input is changing why because the overhead expenses are changing then we can take a decision must the bank proceed with the purchase of the new software so we will see the change in productivity now inputs are changing outputs are changing how it is going to affect the productivity so if the productivity is improving definitely we will say why we should not use this software and if our productivity is coming down we will say no no we must not go for this software thing our workers are doing a very good manual job so let them continue so that decision has to be taken by the organization now let us see what is the influence so this we have already seen the labor productivity in the current scenario now the multi factor productivity in the current scenario is as we know that three officers are produce are processing five loans per day this is the current scenario input is the labor cost plus the overhead so the labor cost is dollar 820 plus the overhead cost in the current scenario when we are not using the software is dollar 500 so the productivity is 0.0113 loans per dollar spent so that is we can say the number of loans per dollar spent and this is the unit which is already given to us in the problem statement that we have to calculate the multi factor productivity in terms of loans uh, per dollar so we have calculated in the same units only so the new software increases the number of loans processed per day which means the output is changing but it also increases the overhead which means the input is also changing so now in the changed scenario the new labor productivity then becomes output is the number of persons remains same but with the use of the software now they are able to process 8 loans per day so the total output is now 24 loans per day and that they are putting 24 hours into the action why because three workers each putting 8 hours per day so 24 hours is the input 24 loans processed per day so we can say one loan per labor hour is the modified labor productivity with the use of the software now what is the new multi multi factor productivity so output is same three workers each processing eight lo each eight loan applications 8 into 324 so three officers eight loans per day input is labor cost remains same dollar 820 but the overhead cost has now changed to dollar 550 so our in terms of loans per dollar our uh, output now is 0. Point, sorry the productivity now is 0.0175 and we can see what was the previous productivity uh, multi factor 0.0113 so now we have 0.0175 so the productivity in terms of loans per dollar has also increased so with this we can say that whatever changes we are doing we are using a new software so that new software is helping each of our loan officer to process eight loans per day so that is definitely improving the labor productivity also and it is also improving the multi factor productivity also we will suggest the company that they must go for this particular software so that it is able to improve the productivity of labor as well as the number of loans processed per dollar so now friends we have seen that we have a current scenario in which our loan officers are processing five loans per day and we have certain inputs in terms of labor input that is dollar 820 and we have overhead that is dollar 500 now in the proposed scenario or changed scenario where we are using a new software for helping our employees we are able to process eight loans per worker or per loan officer and the change is only change in the input is the labor cost remains same but the overhead expenses change from 500 to dollar 500 so we have now two scenarios we can we can check that what is the change percentage change in the uh, with the use of the 
new technology or what is the overall percentage change. So, we have calculated, we have calculated the labor productivity and the multi-factor productivity in case of the current scenario. We have calculated the labor productivity and the multi-factor productivity in the changed scenario where we are using the software. Now, we can see that what is the overall percentage change in the labor productivity as well as the percentage change in the multi-factor productivity. So, in the next slide, this is the last slide for today. Now, purchasing the new software would increase the labor productivity by 60 percent. You can see increase in labor productivity, it was in the proposed scenario, it was 24 divided by 24 that is 1 minus 0 0.625. So, it is divided by 0 0.625 which is approximately coming out to be 0 0.6 and would increase the multi-factor productivity by 55 percent. You can see increase in multi-factor productivity. We have under the proposed scenario using the software our productivity is coming out to be 0 0.0175 loans per dollar minus 0 0.0113 loans per dollar which was in the existing scenario and divided by the existing scenario the value is 0 0.55. So, there is we can see that there is a substantial increase in the labor productivity as well as in the multi-factor productivity if we switch from the current method of doing the job to the advanced method using the software. So, in this way we can compare the various options and see that whether our productivity is increasing or it is decreasing or there is no effect on the productivity. So, with this I think we have tried to understand that how mathematically we can see what are the inputs, what are the outputs and then calculate the productivity. And in many cases we have to read the statement and try to understand that what has to be taken as a output, what has to be taken as a input and then do the division and calculate the productivity. In our next session, our focus primarily will be to understand certain case studies where the changes have led to improvement of productivity or in some cases the changes may even lead to decrease in the productivity also. So, we will try to find out some case studies which further explain the concept of productivity. So, the second week discussion we will be concluding and our focus on productivity will help us to understand that why do we need to change the processes, why do we need to change the style of working, why do we need to change the steps of working, why do we need in general to change the way we work. Because once we change, the change has to be better, for the better and why it has to be for the better because it will make us more productive. So, we will focus on the method study, time study, ergonomics and try to understand that how we must design our work system so that we are more productive, our time is utilized in a best cost efficient and most effective manner. So, with this I conclude the today's session, in the next session our focus will be on the case studies related to productivity. Thank you.